Okay, we're good. Okay, hold on one second. I think I'm having an issue on my end now. Okay, are we ready? Um, I'm Jeanette Durocki. I'm happy to be joining you and thank you for the opportunity to share the Rails School Library Data Project with you today. Over the next 10 minutes, I'll give you a brief overview of the project, including some history and background information. I'll talk about the sources of data and information we're gathering regarding school libraries, as well as the areas of focus for our study. I'll also talk about what's next and how we hope you'll partner with us. You might be wondering why Rails launched this project and more specifically, why now? Uh, to answer that, let me start with some background information. Some of you may be familiar with a three-year study called the Slide Project. According to their website, its main purpose is to determine patterns in the continuing national de decline in school librarian positions and how school districts decide to staff library resources, uh, learning resources, and instructional technology programs for K-12 students. In order to do this, the team at SLIDE has acquired comprehensive data about school libraries from all 50 states. In the process of preparing and analyzing that data, Principal Investigator Keith Curry-Lance noted a remarkable amount of missing data from the state of Illinois. In fact, nearly half of all the data representing Illinois schools was unaccounted for. So this prompted him to reach out to Rails to see if our organization could provide any insight into this data gap. As a result, the Rails School Library Data Project was launched in January 2022. Um, the mission shown here aligns with that of the slide project in that it aims to use data to explore the status of public and private school libraries, their staff, finances, and material resources. It also endeavors to build a renewable data resource to ensure its availability in the future. Um, you can see this is further broken down into two main objectives. Objective number one specifically targets the process of collecting data in order to locate school libraries, identify their staff, examine financial resources, and assess collections. Uh, the second objective states how the data will be used to create a sustainable data resource to be made available to the school library and education communities. So where does all this data come from? Um, here I've listed the primary sources we've used to gather data for this project at the national, state, regional, and local levels. Unfortunately, there's no single data source to provide sufficient complete data about school libraries. We'll always need to collect it from multiple sources. Nationally, we've used the NCES Common Core of Data, an open data resource about public and private schools, providing primarily district level data. Uh, using this source, we were able to confirm the large data gap the slide project found. Um, one concern here is that it's incomplete and it lacks data from all the categories we want to study. And in some cases, it can be more than a year old. At the state level, two main data sources are used, uh, the Illinois State Board of Education and the Illinois State Library. ISBE is a reliable source of school and district level data for variables such as location, enrollment, demographics, and student achievement, but lacks specific library and personnel data we're looking for. The Illinois State Library has been useful in providing data for school districts who've received per capita grants Dan mentioned, as well as those who've completed the annual library certification process. Um, this year, 672 districts received grants through the per capita grant program ranging from the minimum $850 up to $117,718. Um, library certification has been a primary source of recent detailed data because this year, for the first time, school libraries were asked to provide some additional information specifically for our project. Um, in all, 774 schools and or districts completed that process. It was 698 public schools and 76 non-public schools. Um, Rails also has access to some location and staff data through L2, which was also mentioned earlier, on the statewide li library directory and learning calendar. Um, it's important to note that not all school libraries are represented in L2, and it also relies on members to keep their information update, up to date. Uh, local level data from districts and schools has the best potential for providing the greatest detail, but it's also the most restricted and time intensive to collect. Um, district websites and staff directories are helpful and easily accessible, but they can become outdated or fail to reflect vacancies in um, complex staffing situations. School librarians are the very best source of data at this level, but we know you're very busy people, which brings me to our next consideration, which is data accessibility. Um, what I'm referring to here is how easily accessible the information is. Part of the challenge is in determining availability. Who has the data and what's the process to obtain it? Um, the other is the degree of difficulty in acquiring it. 
Um, I've mentioned several sources are open and freely available. However, they often provide high level, less detailed information. To get the library data we are looking for, we often require sources with a higher degree of difficulty. This is where we're hoping you'll partner with us and provide insights into what's happening in your local schools through our upcoming surveys. So now that you know where the data comes from, I'd like to discuss how we're using it. Um, this slide shows our three main areas of focus, staff, finances, and collection. Um, before I dive in, it's important to emphasize the motive here. Um, all the data we're collecting about school library staff is in no way intended for any nefarious use. Uh, we've received a few concerns that it could be used to identify libraries that aren't following protocols or meeting expectations, but I really want to reassure you that our project takes a positive view of school library professionals. We are not interested in conducting any research that negatively impacts school libraries. Um, as a library organization, our aim is to get a clear picture of the status of school libraries in our state so that we can provide support and advocate for increased and equitable access to information and resources for all students. Um, I'll be sharing my contact information at the end, so please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or concerns. <clears throat> Excuse me. That being said, um, first and foremost, we're interested in locating schools with libraries and identifying their staff by title. Uh, something that makes it difficult to examine school library workers is that in just about every district, they are called something different. Um, in fact, we've identified about 330 unique position titles just through this project. Um, we're interested in credentials, education, and training school library staff members have. <clears throat> this includes any formal or informal training related to the fields of education and library and information science, as well as endorsements and certifications. Um, this data can be used to inform professional development and training opportunities. We're also looking at populations being served. This can be based on the locale, whether it's urban, rural, um, regions, county, grade level, age, or other demographics. Um, we're also comparing staffing by building and district size. Employment status is an important metric for us because it specifically looks at how libraries are staffed. Um, many librarians are covering multiple buildings or serving in additional roles within the school, and our data reflects that. Uh, this, that leads me to the last point, which is responsibilities, and we're trying to understand to what extent librarians have responsibilities outside of the library. Next is library finances. Uh, this is pretty straightforward and primarily consists of examining school and district level library budgets, what they cover, how they're determined, and the process school librarians undertake to request materials and resources. We know that this varies widely by district, and we've only really just begun to get an idea of how much. Uh, we're also investigating school library funding sources. Ideally, school libraries reserve dis receive district financial support, which is then supplemented from other sources. Um, grants are one source of additional funding, as Dan mentioned. Um, I've already mentioned the state's per capita grant as well, but there, he spoke of the Rails grants and others. Um, we're additionally exploring programs like book fairs and other events specifically intended to provide materials and resources for libraries. Finally, uh, the last category is library collections. This includes physical and digital assets owned by the school library, um, subscription services or memberships that increase access to content and the types of content included, and how those resources are scoped based on student population. This connects to the library finance data uh, because we're also considering what portion of a library's financial resources are dedicated to those types of programs and how can we support them. Uh, finally, we're exploring the systems libraries are using to track and report their inventory and collections. So that's a quick look at our project. Um, as I mentioned before, the primary intent is advocating for school libraries. Uh, the data and insights from this project can be used as a tool by school librarians to support budget and material requests, uh, support staffing needs and training in professional development. Uh, we hope making this data available and usable will empower school librarians as decision makers and help increase their understanding of how their school or district exists within the library landscape. Um, we want you to be on the lookout for a school librarian survey that's coming this fall. Um, it's the next step in data collection for us, and it'll help us update our staff data and fill in some gaps that we currently have. Additionally, we are preparing for the 2023 library certification process, where we'll again be asking questions specifically about school libraries. Um, Rails is also developing some tools and resources to help school librarians prepare to answer those questions. And finally, 
uh, we've begun building the database to store all this data and hope to have a preliminary dashboard ready to share sometime this winter. So thanks again for your time today. Please feel free to contact me if you have questions or comments. Um, I will give a shameless plug for our session at the IELTS conference. If you happen to be attending, we'll be presenting some of our findings on November 4th. Um, and I just wish you all a great school year. Thanks again for the chance to share today.